Hello, Hyperfast Agent Nation. Today, we've got an amazing guest on our show. He is the founder of Lion Bolt Media, which is a digital marketing agency that focuses only on real estate. So there's a lot of digital marketing agencies out there and most of them do anything and everything. This guy focuses just on digital marketing for real estate agents. He also has a podcast that broadcasts live every Tuesday and Thursday. It is the Real Estate Titans podcast. Welcome to the show, Greg Fowler. Welcome to the show today. I am excited to, uh, to, to chat with, with you. I know you've got a ton of amazing stuff going on in the real estate industry with your podcast, with automation, technology, and a lot of it is more applicable than ever with the coronavirus and the stuff that's going on with that. So uh, why don't you just, let's, let's start with that because I'm sure that's kind of the thing that's top of mind on everybody. Like, how can people use technology? right now to make the most of the situation that we're in. Sure. And, and Dan, I just want to thank you uh, at the very beginning, right off the bat, just, uh, you know, it's an honor to be on the show and you've had some incredible people uh, with Hyperfast Agent on, and um, I'm just excited to, to bring some of the knowledge and heat to your audience. And, uh, you know, with that being said, when it comes to digital aspects, uh, you know, I've been eat, sleeping and breathing that for well over a decade, specific to real estate professionals. So that's, that's really my wheelhouse, if you will. Uh, you know, it's nothing new onto, onto that. I love traveling around, uh, speaking on stages, giving one-on-ones. Um, as far as webinars, now more than ever, um, that physicality is kind of gone temporarily. And uh, we're doing a lot more of this, which is really, really neat. Uh, but I think that real estate professionals and just business professionals in general, entrepreneurs, they've been forced to kind of level up and focus on uh, the digital aspect of leveraging and automating. And, and as you know, back in the day, Specifically to real estate, 20 years ago, we weren't talking about any of this tech space. None of this existed 20 years ago. So um, it's changed pretty rapidly. Um, you know, really the three main ways now to leverage an automated business, when you're looking at it from the standpoint, people, you can leverage and automate your business uh, systems and now more recently technology. But again, 20 years ago, top producers and real estate professionals, they only had those two. Um, right now there's a huge opportunity in a window of a captive audience because everyone is at home, everyone's spending time with their family, but they're also on Netflix and they're spending a lot of time on social media and digital aspects online. So, uh, getting your brand in front of the right people, right places, right time has always been what we all should be doing physically as well as digitally. But I think that again, as you stated, the, the, the focus has been more on this timely manner because people are a captive audience. Um, I've seen my clients metrics just shoot through the roof as far as impressions and engagement, uh, you know, because that captive audience is truly there. So uh, there's lots of different ways to go about it and, uh, you know, to really leverage and, and automate that. So I'd love to share any of that information for sure with the audience. Yeah, let's, let's start with this, this idea that there's more eyeballs right now, more, more people are spending more time on it. You know, they're, they don't have the commutes anymore. They're, they can't go to, rep, you know, out to, to bars, restaurants, shopping, all that. So, so they're at home more on their devices more, you know, I've, I've, I've I heard from one digital marketing agency that their Facebook pricing is where it was like four years ago. They're like mm -hmm. 28% better on cost per click. Yep. And like, are, are you, are you seeing that kind of pricing and, and uh, results as well? We are. There's two key metrics that we're looking at when it is the you know cost per click, client acquisition, all these different things that are that are based off of our KPIs. I, it, what's interesting is there's two schools of thoughts as far as real estate professionals. And again, I can't speak for other businesses in that way because this is this is what I live. But uh, when it comes down to it, there's two schools. There's contraction and there's expansion. The true producers, the top professionals, they understand that no matter what's happening in a given market, whether it's up, down, inside, or out there's opportunity. 
So the real pros are saying there's captive eyes. I'm going to expand. I'm going to double down because I understand that I can get in front of more people than I ever have before. There's some uncertainty out there. There's no doubt. And there's professionals that aren't as sure of their brand, their message and their business and their, their financial standing. So they're contracting. Well, what happens is anybody who's pulling out of the ad space is giving more room for the people to put more money into it. So their ads are more effective. Their ad dollars are going further. Um, I think that it's a wonderful time if you have that budget to double down. However, there's organic ways that you can reach. So if you're not into big ad spend, you're not doing pay-per-click, you're not on Facebook or YouTube, Instagram, and, and spending that money as far as revenue is concerned, uh, organically you can post, organically you can engage, right? You can get in front of people, you should be doing video, you should be really be engaging with your audience in a different way um, on that digital aspect, virtual showings, private showings, things like that, using your phone, Skype, Zoom, uh, FaceTime, any way that you can really get in front of this captive audience. They're waiting for this content. Um, so I, I, I think that that's a, a fantastic opportunity. I really, I really always base it off of whether it's paid or organic. It starts with your messaging itself, because even though we have a beautiful captive audience right now, when it comes down to it, um, and, and the metrics are higher than they have been in a long, long time, uh, it starts with your message. You have to have a nerve striking message that speaks to your audience because you could have the best automation and the best systems and leveraging everything, being in the right place, right time. But if it doesn't speak to them, if it doesn't strike a nerve, they're going to keep swiping. They're going to keep moving. Right. Um, so I used, uh, you know, and I've done this for years when it comes to natural selection. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with natural selection at all, Dan, or, or if you want me to go into that at all, I, I kind of know on it. I, I, uh, I want to hear it. I don't. I, don't okay. I, I think I got an idea of what you're, what you're talking about, but I'm not sure. So let's 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 peel this onion. <laughs> cool. No, I love it. So natural selection. I can just go back to the the basis of nature, right? So, and I use the example of a lion and a herd of zebra. So a lion is going to hunt and gather for themselves to survive and also for their family to to eat, right? So what happens is there's two types of lions. There's one that's not so smart, and there's one that's pretty smart. The not so smart lion says, wow, I see this herd of zebra on the plains of Africa. I'm just going to attack every single one of them. I'm going to fill my belly and I'm going to feed my family too. The problem is they're trying to attack every single zebra. It's going to scatter the herd. They're going to starve. It's impossible to attack everything all at once. The smart lion understands this. And what they're doing, instead of just running like crazy, trying to attack everything, is they're leaning forward and they're paying attention to the 3%. They're scattering the herd and they're paying attention to who's at the back, who's slower, who's older, who's injured, who can I attack, hunt, and gather for myself to survive for food and also for my family. And the same thing applies for business. A lot of real estate professionals that I've had conversations with, well over thousands upon thousands. And when it comes down to it, it's like, I want to work with every buyer and every seller in this neighborhood or this area. I want to work with every buyer and every seller in this niche, in this neighborhood, in this price range, with this income, male-female ratio. It's impossible to attack all of them simultaneously. You have to scatter the herd and address the 3% who are ready to buy or sell at any given time. But that message is what scatters the herd. The lion does it, but just being a lion, right? Natural selection is going to scare zebras. But let's spin it the other way. Most people, when they have a nerve striking message, which they don't, they're the rabbit. So if a rabbit is on the plains of Africa and they run full blast at this herd of zebra, <laughs> the zebra is going to look down and say, what's wrong with you? Right? They're not going to move. They're not going to do a thing. The same thing happens online. Most people, they don't have a nerve striking message physically, right? When you're sitting in front of a buyer or a seller, you don't have anything that's really going to speak to the hearts and souls getting inside their head. It's if I'm having a conversation with you, Dan, and all of a sudden, you're explaining to me the process of buying and selling or, or whatever's going on through the lifestyle adjustments and changes that make me buy or sell a home. And I'm thinking to myself, how does Dan know that I'm thinking that? How, he's in my head, right? He, he's answering the questions before I'm even asking them. And that's really what you want to start with. That's the nerve striking, I connect with you message. All the rest of it is history. If, if you can really figure that out, building and automating and setting up the systems, it doesn't take a genius. I don't want to take anything away from what we do here at Lionbolt Media, but that's really the case. It starts with the copy. It starts with the messaging, um, if that makes any sense through natural selection. So how does, how does the real estate agent come up with that message? So the best case is to have brainstorming sessions and really understand who you are and who you represent in the market. So who's your target demographics? Who are you servicing? Are there niches inside of niches, right? Not just a community, but are there certain types of professionals or certain areas that you want to, to segment and, and, and really hone in on? Um, 
you need to kind of figure that out as best as possible on your own. Now, the longer you've been doing this, the easier that is because you know your niches, you know your people, you know your buyers and sellers, you know your different neighborhoods. When you're starting out, it's a little bit more difficult. But if you're more into the middle or seasoned, it's not that hard if you put some time into it. Once you figure that, that those metrics out, you got to bring a copywriter in. So you don't want to just go to um, Upwork and hire some random copywriter. Uh, what you want to do is look for a, a real estate specific copywriter, somebody who understands the psychology, sales aspects, really basing and going through off of what the buyers and sellers are going through through those lifestyle changes. Buying or selling a home, right? I mean, there's uh, somebody's getting married, somebody's having a new child, somebody's getting divorced, there's a family death, somebody's uh, going off to college, so your empty nester is upsizing, downsizing. Those are real lifestyle adjustments and things that people are moving for a reason, but there's a psychological base, there's ups, there's downs, there's emotions. So to be able to speak to those with your brand and with your culture, that's really the formula. But I'm not a professional copywriter. I mean, I have copywriters. The, those are the people who really do that. I sit with my clients and I say, okay, here's what we do. Here's what you're looking at. Here are your demographics. Here's your messaging. We do the best we can. And then we send it to the pros. We get it back and then we craft it. But ultimately, we could think it's a really strong message and we could think that it's going to resonate, but you don't know until you put it out to the wild. You got to put it in the market and then you got to get feedback and results and then you got to make it better. And that never stops. That feedback loop just keeps going and going and going and going. But if that makes sense, that's, that's how I recommend doing it from the very beginning. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of agents, a lot of business people in general would, would, be better off if they if they actually budgeted some time to try and put themselves in the shoes of the people they're trying to sell to. I know like professional corporations like Procter and Gamble will actually have like avatar rooms where they'll they'll have a room where they they put all the crap that a you know fourteen year old would 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 like have and think about just just so they can get get their you know get their marketing team or, or whoever, get, get them feeling what that prospect, you know, is actually like so that they can communicate a message that resonates with them. And right. you know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying we got to go that far with it, but, um, sure. but I, but I think trying to like live and experience the, the things that that potential prospect is, is feeling and, and, you know, doing that process that you said uh, would, would help a lot of people with their messaging. Agreed. And, and, and I think they're, in the positive and negative is understanding what works and what doesn't. I mean, it, I think that having that open dialogue and communication is everything. And, and again, without it, it's going to be very difficult physically for you to connect with somebody. And it's the same principle that applies digitally. Right. And I, I don't, I don't take them apart. I mean, what you do and who you are and what you represent in the communities and your business physically and your reputation, it needs to be mirrored online because no matter how big or small your reputation is or how big or small your sphere is, there are more people out in this world who don't know us than do. So how do we attack? How do we get more exposure to those demographics of people who know and like and trust us? Because that's what we need to happen. I mean, you start with a message, but at the end of the day, it's okay, well, you know, Dan, you understand who I am and what I'm going through through this buyer sale process. And that means something to me. But at the end of the day, what's in it for me? Because the clients are saying, well, how is Dan going to help me get from point A to point B through this transaction? So second layering is, all right, we'll explain to them how you have proven track record and systems with buyers and sellers in these exact situations to get it done in a timely manner for the most amount of money, however you're going through, because that's the what's in it for me for the client standpoint. So that's secondary. I, a third, which to me is, is one of the most important things, is getting to know, like, and trust. So you might be in my head and understand everything I'm going through, and you might have true proven success and track records, and you can get this done. But if I don't like you, it's going to be very hard for me to connect and work with you. So that is weaving into the culture and the messaging and your brand awareness and everything that's happening into it. So those three portions, that's really what gets it done. Last and not least is call to action, right? So if you're doing it physically, you got to have a call to action, right? Let's work together. And if it's on a digital aspect, hey, you know, click on this link figure out exactly what we do. We'd love to work together, list your home, da, 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 da. So I think that that is kind of the, the sandwich is what I call it. Is, is That's what you're looking for to start with. After the fact, the rest is history with, you know, building the right systems, 
putting the right automation into it. And it's not, it's not all just heavy leveraged and, and uh, really taking you out of the equation. The goal to really running a successful business, as you know, is figuring out who you are and what your highest and best use of your time is, right? So we all have strengths and weaknesses and no one's perfect. And that's a great thing um, because we surround ourselves with great people. So when um, I'm talking to the best of the best and working with the best of the best around the world, as far as real estate is concerned, this is how they really run their businesses. You know, they, they say, okay, I'm really good at these three or four things. And this is my wheelhouse. This is my highest, best use of time. This is where I'm generating the highest amount of revenue. Anything that's outside of that nucleus, that center, if you will, I need to bring a system or automation in place, whether that's a person, right? A body, a physical employee, a system or a technology, but anything that you apply to that has to be a true extension of yourself. It, it's not watering you down and getting a worse result. It's actually doing the opposite. Um, Jeff Bezos had a, a great keynote last year, or the year before through Amazon, it was about positive or negative flywheels. Did, did you hear that one at all, Dan? Or I, I don't want to, I don't no, want to bore you. No, I, I, it's, I, I it's neat, man. It's, it's neat. I, I highly recommend any of your audience to, to look it up. It was Jeff Bezos with Amazon and it was positive or negative flywheel. So hopefully I don't butcher it, but, um, most businesses, when it comes down to it, they're negative flywheels. And that's just the case of why most businesses and entrepreneurs fail in, in such a short period of time. Uh, what happens is we start with our business, we get a client, we do a really great job, we spend an ample amount of time with them, the results are fantastic, they're extremely satisfied, they're repeat customers, they send their friends, and we grow our business. The problem with that is every single new client that we get in duplicate, it spreads our time and spreads our time and spreads our time. Less time with the client, less positive a result. Um, they're not as happy. They don't send as many people. Eventually what's going to happen is one of two things. You're, you're having lackluster results or mediocre results, or maybe even okay results, but then you get spread super thin and then you're burning it at both ends. You're working seven days a week. You don't have a life. You don't have a balance, no health, no family relationships the whole night, or your business just dies because it's just getting worse and worse. The only way to get to the positive flywheel effect, which is what every best practice, best business, best real estate office has or individual, it's the complete opposite. It's every new client they get, it gets faster. It gets smoother. It gets a better result and they generate more clients. And the way they do that is through leveraging and automation points. That's it. People, systems, and technology. Um, it's hard for a, a newer professional to really understand that because one, they're fielding all the calls right at the beginning, right? Every single side of the transaction, they're having the entire conversation happen from start to finish. They're doing all the work. But as they start to realize and grow revenue, if they can you know, last through that time frame, they say, what's the first thing that I should automate? What's the first thing that I should leverage? And you got to put money into your business to make it. And everybody has that fear point of, oh, gosh, when do I do that? What's the right time? There's no right given time, but you'll know. You'll realize that your time is better served else places, but there's still parts of your business that need to be running because it makes the whole thing go. So you'll know when that time is, but it's never going to be right, um, no matter how much revenue or, or those sorts of things. But that's usually not the issue that I find with a lot of people that I speak with. It's really, no one's going to do it as good as I am, right? My clients are going to be offended because they're not talking directly to me. But that's where we talked to the very beginning. It has to be the right person. It has to be the right system or the right technology. And that's through trial and error. You're not going to get it right the first time, but you got to try because the more you're able to leverage and automate the outside of your nucleus, the more time you're able to spend on the highest and best use, which means your business grows. If you're putting money in those right places, you're going to generate revenue back. And if you're not, something's wrong and you got to reevaluate it. That's just my humble opinion um, and the professionals that I work with and speak with all over the country. So. Where do, where do you think real estate agents should be putting money right now in their business? Because in this environment, like there, there's so much fear out there and, you know, everywhere from the top down, like you, you see these large national brokerages are, are cutting staff, mm -hmm. cutting, cutting corporate marketing down to zero. Uh, and I know individual agents are probably thinking about the same. So like, where does, where does the, Where's the average real estate agent out there right now? Where do you think they should be putting money? So it, you always got to look at it as uh, cause and effect. And I think you look at your individual budgeting, right? So it's not what you make, it's what you keep. 
And I don't care how much or how little you make. I really believe that. So you have to look at your initial budget too. If it's not there, if you're pulling back, if you're contracting a little bit and you're having a 30, 60, 90 day holding pattern, it is what it is. You don't want to put yourself into a compromising position one way or the other, but it's all relative. So for somebody who doesn't have a super high budget, really organically posting, um, you know, creating content on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, that's going to give you reach. That's going to give you engagement, right? That doesn't cost anything but time. And there's a lot of individuals that have quite a bit of time now, especially at home. So I think that on that entry level, you really don't need to be spending any money at this point. If it's mid to high end and you're spending anywhere from 10, 20, $30,000 a month on different ad sets, right? Whether it's physical or digital ad spend, you really want to take a look at that. And, and you should be doing this anyway, regardless of what's happening right now, every single quarter or if not sooner, you should be looking, what am I spending? What am I generating? I'm not just spending it just for the sake because I have the money or it worked five years ago or six months ago. It's cyclical. Markets change. Consumers adjust. You have to have your finger on the pulse. So look at your overall budget. Look at what's working and what's not. You should always be ripping out the things that aren't as long as there was given ample time and you were actually working with true professionals, right? Because that's a whole nother issue. Um, but I think that you look at it, your particular budget. If I'm in those realms, I am heavily, heavily doubling down on Facebook ads. Um, that's just my uh, particular, I mean, there's, there's so many different services for lead gen, you know, Zillow, Ylopo. I mean, you name it, there's all kinds of automation services and businesses that you can set up on your own, um, through organic lead generation or paid lead gen pay-per-click. Uh, but for me, it's Facebook. It's the number one website in the world. Uh, you know, over 2 billion active users on a regular basis. Core demographic is 35 to 55. I mean, this is where our consumer lives and breathes the younger generation, the millennials, they're on Instagram, they're on a Snapchat, they're on a TikTok. Um, there's different segments depending on your markets and who you're trying to touch. So for me, the biggest bang for your buck, if you will, has been and still is Facebook. But the problem is, is that people aren't running ads properly. They really don't know what they're doing. They boost posts and they don't even know what they're boosting. Um, they don't know what core demographics they're really targeting. So a lot of people have really low budgets on there on top of it. Uh, they don't give enough time for initial conditions and the Facebook algorithm and variation. So there, there's so much in there that people just don't know or take seriously. And that's why they get lackluster results. Uh, the people who really know what they're doing, they're dominating. They're absolutely crushing it. Um, so if that answered the question. What, what part of Facebook or, or should I say the, the, the lead, uh, the funnel, like, like where should agents be, be putting the spend right now if they are on Facebook? Should it be on branding, awareness, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure everyone wants now business, but a lot yeah. of times that's the most expensive business to get on Facebook. True. So like what, what part of the, the cycle do you think people should be focused on or, or how would you kind of break it up your budgeting? Um, I, I think that I'm always looking for the, the ultimate KPI of closed transactions. So when I'm sitting with my clients, it's, you know, impressions are great, right? Video views are great. It's brand awareness. That's really hard to quantify for a return on investment, but there is some tangible aspect of out of sight, out of mind versus being in front of the right people, right places, right time. So you can run just brand awareness campaigns that are out there. But at the end of the day, I, I, I don't recommend it. Um, if you, if you don't have backend funnels, which I use click funnels, there's so many different funnel services that you can really gravitate towards the audience and then put them in the right places to actually feed them and generate your own leads. Um, I think that if you're really just trying to market to a particular community, um, you know, with Facebook, it's only a 15 mile radius. You can't do demographics. You can't do zip codes anymore. When it comes to real estate, it's, it's a very specific housing category. So if you're dropping a pin on a city, the smallest and tightest you can go is 15 mile radius. So for you to really say that I want to be that go-to real estate professional in that particular neighborhood, that's where a multimedia campaign would come in. I'm still a believer of you know, door knocking and, and getting involved in the community and shaking hands and, and direct mail pieces if you're really wanting to do it to a higher standard. However, um, that's if you're really going granular. I think that if you're really trying to dominate into a specific segment, Facebook is still the way to go. Um, and you can really funnel that information through a lead gen system that you build on your own, which is, you know, again, through a funnel service. So, um, if you are just looking to do a more traditional set, yeah, you can run ad campaigns that are just going to gravitate towards brand awareness. I'm a firm believer of just doing, if you're going to run successful ad campaigns, 
you're actually doing all of that simultaneously. So there, there's a, t- a twofold. And, and when I look at it, there's brand awareness campaigns mixed with lead generation campaigns, and they should be one and the same because if you're building it the way that we discussed earlier, you're having that message that's striking the nerve of that audience. You're connecting with them on a very personal level, which you're building your brand and you're having a call to action, which is going to buy or sell a home. So you should really be combining those. Um, and that's what I do with the ads that I run. I don't, I, I very rarely, if at all, just run brand awareness campaigns or likes campaigns just to generate more likes. There always should be a reasoning for it, but you got to give value to get value. So I, I think that that's a kind of a, a proverbial tug of war. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that answered that question. No, that, that, that does. Um, I mean, how, how much, how much would you, what percent do you actually kind of have a, a percent that you would tell someone like, put this much in branding, this much in direct CTA call to action, this much in retargeting or? Sure, sure. Um, I think that it, it varies off your ratio. I like the initial, the majority of the, the basis being on the lead generation side. Um, and, and again, so if you're looking at an 80, per, I, do, I would do an 80-20, so 80% of that lead generation side, but retargeting um, you know, is, is a very, very crucial portion. Um, having that attachment is really, really great. So utilizing um, you know, a Google Tag Manager, perfect audience, uh, you know, when you're looking at bit.ly links, I mean, tracking and retargeting is crucially important. Um, Facebook custom conversions, so that if somebody is actually visiting your site, uh, visiting your particular ad set in any form or fashion, whether it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, you're building your actual conversion so that you can send those and retarget and be in front of them. I, I call it omnipresence. So really being in front of buyers and sellers in your community, but very, very strategically, right? All over the web. So not just based off of Facebook. So retargeting, I, I really like to formulate that all over the internet and not just sold to Facebook. But um, yeah, I, I think that the 80-20 is, is what I roll for because I think that initially you got to drive people to your brand, to your message and, and have them convert to a potential buyer or seller. Now, if you can't get them to that point, because there's gaps, right? There, there's gaps in a particular funnel or a series. So how you fill those gaps is with automation. So um, I, I like uh, very specifically um, perfect audience is going to be a really great one. Um, active campaign is another great one where you can literally run automation series into it. So if somebody were to see a particular Facebook ad um, or Instagram or YouTube or whatever the case may be, and you're driving traffic to a particular site, the thing is, and the problem is, is most real estate sites or business websites for that matter, 99.9% of them are completely static. They don't right. do anything. They don't generate leads. They look beautiful. They have photos, they have videos. You can look at active listings, there are IDXs, all these different things, a a team collage. Um, But at the end of the day, they're not converting. So that's why I'm a huge fan of having something that's specifically designed for that, which is where funnels come into play and there's lots of services. But once you get them from an organic or a paid lead going to your landing page and or funnel, which looks just like a website, um, you got to give them something of value, which ends up being a value video. So when I look at that, it's not going to be a a pamphlet. It, I mean, some, some of the clients that I work with, they give out books, right? Where it's step-by-steps, things like that. If they're, you know, nationally recognized as authors, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, people want to consume the content through video, but it has to be special. It can't just be something you can Google or, or look up on YouTube. It has to be very specific to the audience and to your offer and to that particular message, getting in the hearts and souls and then telling them why and then going through. So once they get to that point, really setting up a date and time uh, using G Suite and schedule once, I think is really the best way to go about it. So it's automated through your calendar. They pick a date and time that works best for them. They fill out a customized survey. So it's very low on the funnel as far as lead gen is concerned. But if it's built that way through a funnel, most people aren't. They do one single page or they don't even have that. So they're pushing all these ads out. They're creating all this content, but where are they going? What's the call to action? What are you really trying to accomplish? So I always say this to everybody, before you start a physical or digital ad, why are you doing this in the first place? What are you trying to accomplish? Is it likes on a Facebook page? Is it you know reviews on a Zillow account? Are you trying to generate more buyers, more sellers? You have to figure out who you're speaking to first, and then you have to build accordingly because it's not a one size fits all. And you have to really understand these things. And it's through testing, it's through leveraging people who know what they're doing. And I think that's crucially important. You can dabble and test, but when you get to a certain point, again, what's your highest and best use of time? You know, it's with the buyer, it's with the seller, it's negotiating, it's, it's really understanding the process and being with the people. It's not sitting behind a computer for 12 hours straight. So I think that really looking at it from that standpoint matters. 
um, you know, when it comes down to the, the lead funnel and the servicing and everything. But the automation piece is there's gaps, there's holes. So anything that you can use to leverage yourself and your messaging. So if somebody watches the value video, but they bop, they jump out because maybe they're watching it and then all of a sudden their kids come home, right? Or they have to cook dinner and they, they put their phone down and they forget. So that automation is designed, you know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes later, an hour later, 24 hours later, pop back into their email saying, hey, Greg, I saw that, you know, you, you watched our video. We'd love to sit down with you um, and have a great conversation about listening to your home or, or, or anything along those lines. Take a second to fill out a date and time that works for you. Here's the link. Like you're pushing people back into it. You're not just letting things fall. And again, that's why I love retargeting as well, because if somebody goes to your website, there's a reason, right? If somebody opted in for something, there's a reason. Now, for you to be able to have that fine line between being in front of them and not annoying them, there's that, that line. There's unsubscribe, there's all kinds of things. But I think that that needs to be put in place because so many professionals, if that lead isn't ready then and there, then it's like, hey, I'm qualifying over 100 leads a day. Uh, you know, I don't have time to follow up with all these people because we're constantly just going, going, going. You're doing yourself a disservice throwing an automation system in there where, okay, if they're not ready now, but they're ready three months, six months, especially in a market that we're in right now, uh, you know, buyers and sellers are holding back a little bit. So they're saying, Hey, I'm going to wait this for a blowover. I wanted to buy, buy or sell right now, but I'm just going to wait. And then it's going to flood in. So you're not just going to kick those to the curb, right? You're going to follow up with them. So do the same thing that you would physically digitally. Um, I, I think that where a big disconnect with that too is, is that physically there's so many producers and professionals and no offense to anybody's watching or listening. The follow-up is terrible. I mean, it's just, we get so excited about a new client. A hundred percent on that. <laughs> you get it though, right, Dan? I mean, it's, it's so sad. So it doesn't surprise me that digitally is the same way, but if we get ourselves together physically, I mean, even if you can't, let automation do it for you, right? Don't waste anything. To, I mean, if they're not ready now, put them on a drip automatically. It's coming from your verbiage. It's coming from your actual presence. So it's not some AI robot that just doesn't make any sense. It's not connecting with them in any way, but you got to set it up from the right way and then let it ride. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, I agree so much on the follow-up. And I think even in, in regular times, you hear so many agents that say like, yeah, Facebook marketing or Instagram or digital, or whatever, it just doesn't work for me or in my market. And, and most of the time I think it's, it's because they either don't have a good place to send this person, right? They're not converting, they're not collecting the information, like they're sending them to their homepage, right? Like right. we send, we send all of our leads. They're, they're either going to a specific page that we've built mm -hmm. in click funnels yep. or, or they're going to a, like our seller leads, a lot of them go to this home evaluation tool that we built on our, on our website. But when you're there, you don't, you don't see other options. Like we've got all the menu bars, all that hidden. It's, it's basically a video explaining how our home evaluation tool works and put in your, put in your information if you want to, to get the value of your home right now online and, and we'll have someone follow up to confirm. And we actually make that, we've made that available to other agents hyper, it's at hyperfastportal.com. But that's huge. I, I think, I think that's one of the, the, the errors they make. And the second one is, is not following up. And, and I think right now it's even more important. Like in normal mm -hmm. times, I would say like 80% of the Facebook leads are three months or, or longer. Sure maybe even more, uh, but, but that's the business that agents ignore and, and mm -hmm. don't follow up with and don't automate. And, and, and I think it's, it's probably skewed even higher right now with everything that's going on. Like, I, I think your, your dis, disruptive marketing, like I, I kind of put mm -hmm. our online marketing in two bins, either disruptive or intent, mm -hmm. right. Intent based. I, I would consider like Zillow, Google PPC, like, like something where, they're intending to learn about real estate, right? Sure. Face, Facebook, Instagram, I consider disruptive. Like nobody goes on there to find a house. They, right. they go on there to see their friends, see their family, complain about something, bitch, <laughs> bitch about politics, try to try to persuade people of their worldview, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's why they go on there. So your your home ad is disrupting them, but 
if it, if, if they're interested in the next mm -hmm. six, 12 months, like they might click on it now just to get information. So, sure. and, and that, I think that that ratio is going to be even more split right now. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're seeing a lot of our leads right now that are like now buyers are mm -hmm. coming more coming in off Zillow sure. than Facebook, yeah. but like, we're not going to ignore Facebook because I know there's just going to be this flood of, of business in three to six months. That's, that's on there right now if, if right. you can follow up with them and and if you have a message that actually stands out into that world of as you just mentioned people are going for social aspects they're not let's say looking for houses um very intentional for real estate related websites directly or zillow trulia as you mentioned realtor.com um, those different things what's really interesting about proper key metrics where a lot of people don't really understand and hopefully i get this to your audience is when Somebody is on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, Google, uh, Big Brother, if you will, Yahoo and Bing, they're paying attention to every single site that we're looking at, every single thing that we're going to, and they're putting us in a particular bucket. So uh, they're looking at lifestyle changes. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, if you're relocating for a job promotion, if you got married, if you got divorced, new child, uh, empty nesters, kid going away to college, uh, all of those things solicit internet searches. So if I'm having a new child, I'm looking up doctor's offices, pediatricians, how to make that perfect nursery. Um, if I'm getting married, I'm looking at wedding venues, DJs, catering companies. Um, if I'm relocating, I'm looking up ABF, U-Haul, all these different services that are applied to internet. Now, granted, when it comes to dynamic search, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they all know these things very deeply. Uh, so what's really interesting about that is um, anybody who's doing those searches, and as you said very directly, Dan, like somebody's going to Zillow and somebody ends up going to realtor.com, Facebook knows that. So the ads that are done dynamically, your ads are only going to go in the right places, right time, right people through interest, through building proper audiences. So that's something that really needs to be note, noted. Um, and we've seen those key metrics adjust over the past three and a half, four years, very specifically on Facebook, that the accuracy level is going through the roof uh, because of that. And they're getting stricter and, and more complete, um, you know, when it comes down to everything that's there. So uh, really understanding that nothing's secret or sacred. Uh, every site we go to, every conversation that we have, uh, you know, is recorded. And they're trying to really get out of the basis. There was an article in Forbes magazine in 2016. Um, and this was 2016, target versus data or target and big data. And essentially what happened was, is a young girl got pregnant. Um, she was researching, you know, how to be a mom and things to do uh, in her private, in a room on her private laptop uh, within a, a several week period. What happened is big data was collecting all this information. Target, um, you know, corporate bought this information, started mailing her home on file, baby coupons, magazines, samples piled up over several weeks dad stands over the pile of mail over family dinner and says, why are we getting all this baby stuff? Her face turns red and her family finds out she's pregnant through big data. So th <laughs> that, that was in 2016. The, the accuracy is through the roof, but building the ad sets right, putting the proper audiences in, even though I'm not intending to look at property on Facebook or Instagram, I was doing that on Zillow. And they know that. So they're putting ads in front of people that were looking at these subsequent categories, but you have to build these properly. Most people don't. Um, and that's where the variation between successful and non-successful comes down to is understanding that this is happening all around us, but how do you use that to your advantage as, as a producer, as a professional, especially in real estate? Um, other ad sets are much easier to do because they don't have the restrictions that we have. Now, years ago, Facebook was beautiful. Facebook was so much easier because you could really drill it down to a specific zip code, male, female ratio, job titles, income brackets. I mean, there was so much, they took it away for fair housing. So you even have to be more strategic, but the, the numbers are there. The, the, the lead quality is there. Um, but, but again, it comes down to the mix of the messaging um, it, you have to have great photos. Don't use templated stock photos um, that you're just finding with some business professional pointing at a document or some random person <laughs> pointing at a house. That's crazy. Get a proper photographer, shoot you in action with buyers, with sellers, um, at a coffee shop on the phone. Show that you are a business professional and putting people in the shoes of the buyer and seller. Make it visually pleasing like an advertorial, right? Don't go cheap on that. If you're going to spend money, spend money on the copy, spend money on the photos and spend money on the video production. All the rest of it will work itself out. 
if you have somebody who knows what they're doing. Even if you don't know anything about Facebook, get that content ready, hire somebody who knows what they're doing, and you'll see that flood in because you can't do that anywhere else. You can't run ads that are as dynamic anywhere else like that. Um, and that's why I get really excited about it. And, you know, the results speak for it. So, and, and you get quick feedback too, which you mentioned earlier, the importance of, of, you know, check it, checking in at least quarterly, but, but probably mm -hmm. more often. And, and especially with what's going on right now, you, you got to check in more. And, and this is one of the big advantages of, mm -hmm. of this type of marketing compared to what we had 10 years ago, 20 years ago is like, Gosh, you yeah. get instant results so you can you get do. feedback almost every day and especially with with what, what's going on with covid19 and coronavirus and all that like you need to change your messaging like like we uh as soon as this thing happened we switched mm -hmm. all of our meetings to zoom right if, if the buyer and seller wanted so like they can mm -hmm. do the initial consult on zoom just like this and you know, normally in a normal week, we get 70 to 80 appointments set. That's how much, yeah. that's how many appointments are between automation and our phone calling team. That's how many they set. Well, week, uh, week one of coronavirus, when it kind of, you know, when stuff started shutting down in our area, we, we switched yeah. to virtual and we still booked 75 appointments. That's awesome. Dan. 50 of them were, were virtual though on zoom. Yeah. So had we not made that adjustment, like we might've gone from 75 to 25 and, and that's, that's going to hurt us. Right. Right. But, but, you know, I think by, by being one of the first people to really switch meetings to zoom and really put that messaging out there, like that's, you know, right or wrong people, people are scared right now. And, and Correct. this is one of the ways to, to solve that and to create, you know, that, that type of messaging, I think that uh, just really resonates. Yeah, so I think I think you got to look for ways to do that right now and, and get get the feedback loop even tighter. And I agree with that. And I love the 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 instant, whether it's working or not, you know, right away is other ad sets or things that you're putting out on a more traditional basis. It's hard to really track and understand if it's radio, if it's TV, if it's park benches, billboards, um, you know, magazines, whatever the case may be. So I do like that aspect for sure. And but what you're talking about, which I really, really love is the true professionals aren't pausing their business or stopping their business. They're pivoting. That's what they're doing. And just as you said, instead of the physicality, you're setting it up on Zoom or Skype or FaceTime. There's, there's precautions that everyone's taking, rightfully so. This is a serious thing. Um, you know, so when you're doing virtual showings, when, when you're really having that dialogue, if people are backing off, right, which I'm seeing across the board that people are still buying, they're still selling, right? It's not to the highest of highs and, and rightfully so. I think people are slowing. Um, they're going to say, hey, I'm going to wait this out. But what you're doing right now and every action that we're taking today is building up our pipeline or it's not, right? So it's not stop or pause. It's how can I be in front of more people physically or digitally? Well, it's mostly going to be digitally, right? So uh, FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, those sorts of things, um, running organic uh, posts, things like that, or paid posts, um, getting in front of those people because all those conversations that are happening now are going to pay off 30, 60, 90 days down the road. And whatever you might have missed are going to pop into when the market gets back up there again. And then hopefully it'll make up for whatever you lost in that time frame. But the last thing to do is just stop because I know there is a lot of fear and uncertainty out there. Um, but I think the best thing is just taking those steps forward. It's like that locomotive, uh, you know, the momentum carries it so far, but when you stop it, it's really hard to get it back up again. So it, it, you just don't want to do that to your business and your world and real estate. Take care of yourself, take care of your family, take this thing seriously, but just keep taking the massive amounts of action that you would normally do every day, but just not the same ways, right? So you're not sitting and having five cups of coffee every single day with prospects or clients, for, but you can do that digitally, right? I mean, put the same amount of action that you normally do on a regular basis, just put it into something else for this time being, because this will pass. Whether it's weeks or months, it'll pass. And markets have adjusted, it's cyclical, this happens, right? I'm not talking about an epidemic or a virus, but we've had market change, market adjustments, it's gone up, it's gone down. Business has continued. This is real estate, people need a place to live. They're buying and selling homes. So as crummy as the situation is, I'm not downplaying pain and sorrow because people are getting sick. People are dying. This is really scary for the economy and, and situations along those lines. People are, are, are losing their jobs. Their, their, their businesses are, are hurting um, as far as entrepreneurs, business owners, things like that. Um, it's a scary time. However, you can't do anything about it sitting around thinking this way. All you got to do is take action. You just got to be positive and take action. Be realistic. 
know that this is going to pass, do the best you can. So um, I think that so many things that we talked about really make sense, uh, you know, for everybody that's out there that can, it can apply. And um, yeah, I just, I think it's a, it's an insane time right now. It's, it's bizarre, but uh, you know, I'm excited for the future. I'm really optimistic. Uh, there's no doubt. Yeah, I am too. And, and this has been awesome, Greg, before we wrap up, I want to, do the hyper fast round with okay. you. So okay. Are, you, are you ready for some rapid fire yeah. questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right. What's the biggest piece of advice you'd give to a new agent? Uh, find a mentor. Uh, I think that's the, the best thing to do. Uh, you know, find somebody who has uh, experience, knowledge, and where that you eventually want to be. And you need to reach out because the people that reach out um, you know, and, and ask for that advice. And if it's the right person, the most successful people in the world, they want to share, they want to give. Um, so everybody's been helped at one point in time. So really reach out to people, uh, find a mentor, somebody that you can bounce ideas off. If it's a mastermind group, that's even better. Um, but I think first and foremost, no one does it alone. Um, and then everybody needs guidance at what time, but just remember that when you get to that point where you're at the pinnacle to reach down and help somebody else the same way that you were. And I think that that should just go around and around. So that's my quick advice there. All right. What, what about to an experienced agent? Biggest piece of advice to them? Gosh, um, I, I think that you uh, understand strengths and weaknesses, leverage as many points as possible, uh, really grow and scaling your business, but not just for the fact and the sake of growing, scaling business, but for more time. So look at what's currently done. How can you improve? How can you grow and scale? And, and most of the most successful top producers that I work with, it's based off of the people and the systems, automations and leveraging look at the tech space. But hey, if you're heavy tech, right, and you're leveraged like that, like crazy, think about the other automation systems. Think about the people. Think about really engaging. Um, but then really doing that for the right, which is time. So that's the number one commodity. So when we're talking about the best of the best and the people that I work with mainly, they have plenty of revenue coming in. They have great businesses that are applied. They have wonderful reputations in the community, but they don't have a whole lot of time. So how can you get more is by leveraging and automating. And I would highly recommend looking at your business that way to do it because more time for family, more time for, for, for breaks, vacations, um, thinking about exit strategies. Hey, maybe it's other investment opportunities. Um, if all you're doing is eat, sleeping and breathing real estate at the end of the day, you got to look to diversification. The average millionaire has seven income streams in the United States, seven. I mean, you can't just get it done with one. I mean, it's, it's next to impossible. It's not future proofing yourself. So I think diversification, automation and leveraging uh, for the top of the top. That's what I would say. What's your, what's the biggest business challenge you've ever had? You know, how did you overcome it? Oh gosh. I, I think that when it came down to it is that point of, of scaling, uh, that negative flywheel where, when you're bringing in so many new, uh, customers and clients and you're getting spread thin and spread thin and spread thin, and you really start to see the cracks. You really start to see the customer service drop, the time drop, uh, that was very difficult for me years ago. And, um, you know, I really had a, an honest heart to heart with one of my mentors. And, and that was really what it came down to is, you know, hey, it's, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality and get your quality in check, you know, understand where you came from and, and what's really working and focus on, on the quality. And eventually, putting those right systems and timeframes and time blocking and time managing yourself, really understanding where you're spending your time um, and who you're spending it with is really gonna matter. Help people that can help you, right? It's not what's in it for me, but at the end of the day, your time is finite and you can only help a certain amount of people. So you gotta really look at it from that standpoint from mutual beneficial opportunities and what's going through. So uh, that was the biggest challenge is just time blocking, time management, uh, scaling too quickly and not really catching the gaps or the cracks. And then customer service uh, is, is being lackluster or not to the standards that you know I'd like. So. Um, really going through and just and figuring that out and dialing it in, taking years to do it. It doesn't happen overnight, um, but you have to have a conscious effort. You have to be present um, and honest with yourself and your business and not ignore these things because they'll catch up. I mean, they really will. Yeah, I agree. Where do you see yourself in five years? Oh gosh, you know, I, I'm doing what I love. Uh, I'm, I'm hanging out with amazing people, uh, you know, continuing the growth of, of Real Estate Titans and the podcast that way and interviewing inc incredible people all over the world, uh, you know, helping my clients grow and scale their business digitally with Lion Bolt Media, um, you know, spending as much time with my family as possible. Uh, my daughter is uh, 19 months, uh, you know, it's just, she's a light of my life and uh, I just, I want to be there. I want to be present uh, with my wife, with my daughter and with my family and friends and so, uh, you know, business growth, 
podcast growth, uh, fam hopefully family growth and, uh, you know, just really, really doing my part to, uh, you know, project light and, uh, motivation out there to the world and, and really just uh, make a difference, uh, for sure in the next five years. So awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, that's, that's all the time we got before we sign off, uh, Greg, how can people, how can our listeners our, our audience, how can they get in touch with you or watch what you're doing? What are the best ways? Sure. So uh, for the digital marketing agency, Lionbolt Media, um, you just go to lionboltmedia.com. Uh, everything's in there. We're geared straight towards real estate professionals. We don't work with doctors, CPAs, attorneys. We eat, sleep, and breathe real estate. That's all we do. Um, it's very specific. We're not jacks of all trades and master of none. So that's really uh, the main focus with Lionbolt Media. Uh, so check out the website there. Uh, you can engage on the Facebook page as well. As far as uh, Real Estate Titans, uh, the podcast, we hit our two-year mark uh, in March. So we have, we just shot episode 164 um, on Friday uh, of this last week. So it's really great stuff. You can look at, um, you know, Real Estate Titans um, live.com, or you can look at us up on the Facebook page. We live stream every Tuesday and Friday afternoon. Um, it's a different Titan, different location. Uh, very similar to the setup that you guys have here with Hyper uh, Fast Agent. So it's really, really great. Actually, Dan, I'm super excited to announce to your audience too that I'm going to be blessed and honored to have you as a featured Titan. Um, and I believe that it's April 17th. Uh, so it's coming up real soon. Awesome. So I'm really excited to, to spin the questioning around on you, my friend, and, and really just uh, share you with my audience as well. Yeah, I can't wait. That will be a good time. So, um, so, so make sure if, if you're listening to this show, make sure you check that one out. Uh, Real estate Titans live.com. Yep. Uh, it's also on Facebook and then lionboltmedia.com as well. If you want to learn how Greg helps real estate agents through digital marketing and all that great stuff, Greg, this has been awesome. Thank you for being on the show. I'm excited to be on yours and to everyone out there listening thank you for tuning in thanks dan it was an honor a pleasure thank you so much thank you for tuning in to this episode of the hyper fat show subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest hyper fat shows and remember we love reviews reviews help us bring better and better guests improve our shows and give us the good the bad and the ugly we hope you enjoyed the show and we will see you next time Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you wanna see more, click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And leave some comments about what you think on the videos. I read them all each week, and I select winners to give out hats, shirts, coaching calls with me, and tickets to some of our events. I'll see you next time.